On today's show, it is waiver time. We have six teams on by. There are a lot of players that you need to take a look at. Who should you add? Who should you drop? As well as defenses that we're picking up and stashing. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Tuesday edition of the show. NFL News, Waiver Wire, quarterback streamers on today's episode and some chitter chatter about all sorts of stuff. I intentionally mm -hmm. didn't say Monday Night Football Recap. <laughs> I, I, I am... Uh, I'm just really dragging. I'm really tired today. So trying to wake up with the music. It comes to the point, and I'm like, oh, God, what day is it? Is it football time? And I'm like, okay, no, it's not. And then I remembered the game that I watched last night. Which also wasn't football time. Which, what? I the, mean. The string of tweets of people saying, is is this the worst game of all time? And, you're mm -hmm. like, and I would laugh because I have, before I read people's tweets, I'm like, this is the worst game I've ever seen. It so was we all real just, bad. We like, all watched it, and it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, they're, the winning team did not have a touchdown. That's a fact. <laughs> that that's that happened. It was uh, the pumpkining of Joshua Dobbs. Yeah, mm -hmm. which yeah. Um, clock struck midnight on Dobbs. Yeah, and it has for every team they he's ever every team he's played on. They've got to stop teaching him the playbook. He does so right. well. When he first comes in, has no idea what the playbook is or the names of his teammates, and then as soon as he like you know gets plugged into the offense, it's like ah, it doesn't work. And now they're talking about making a change at quarterback, whether it's Mullins or going back to the rookie. Um, yeah, that was bad. We've had a lot of bad island game football this year, and it went. It did seem like it kind of went faster last night. Uh, not for me. Not for you? Not for okay. me, because I did watch it in its entirety. Um, I am the one of the three people in America that did stick around for the whole game. Um, I, I think as bad as Joshua Dobbs pumpkining, Justin Fields, I, I, I don't know exactly how much to blame him, because the play calls were clear, designed, you know, they're, they're coming out of the huddle, and they are running a screen. Every play. Yeah, but they and won't see it coming this time. I can't. I, I did you see the numbers? The, there, there were four completions total between both teams beyond the line of scrimmage. The, the, the four. I've, I have never seen any kind of game with that many passes sideways or backwards. I, I, I can't Which wrap my head not around good how, football. how you. It's not good football. It's not good offense. It's not good. Play calling, not good play design. I don't care what you saw about the the Vikings defense that's like, oh, I think we can beat him with this play. You can't just run an offense but where they you did. And they won. <laughs> and they won. Well, four interceptions for Josh Dobbs. Yeah. They didn't help matters. Four interceptions. One of the most ridiculous Jordan Addison plays I've ever seen. And I, I rewatched that clip because he did the drop. No, I'm talking about the sideline. The sideline oh. run the, where, where he he had more separation from the defender than I've ever seen. Like there was no one around him, and I watched it because at first I thought that Dobbs let him out of bounds, and that was the problem, which Dobbs clearly could have thrown a better football. But it was all Jordan Addison. Like I watched it slow mo, and like Addison on the sideline instead of making the sideline catch, turns his body backwards to backpedal a ball with no awareness of the sideline. That would have been a touchdown. Like he mingoed. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan Mingo did that this week too. I mean, it was it was tough to watch. Um it was 12 to 10. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. Let me let me ask you this as sort of a quick question of the day before we get into everything. Justin Fields has played 35 games as a starting quarterback, which is that's a lot. Mm -hmm. 
um, is he going to be the quarterback of the Chicago Bears when snap one happens at the end no. at the beginning of next no season? No chance. There, you cannot um, you, you cannot roll into the third try here. You did this already. You traded you know the that pick for a haul. You got a better team, and honestly, you look at the Bears, and the Bears' defense is playing better. They they traded for Sweat. They they're looking like a decent team, but they're still barely winning games or losing games. Um, I don't believe that you can pass up. You're going to have the number one pick with Caleb Williams on the board. I I don't believe that Justin Fields will stay a bear Mike what do you think because uh you know Caleb Williams Drake may have had poor senior seasons um you know the 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 quarterback options I don't think like when I look at it compared to Kyler like the Cardinals are going to have a top three pick too I think the Cardinals should stay with Kyler I don't think you're getting better at the quarterback position in the draft I think that Fields had to really like he had to play well every single game for the remainder of the season because it's been too hot, too cold. When you have when you open the season the way that he did, like if if he had played fantastic for that whole opening stretch, then got hurt, things would be different. But going into year three, not a hundred percent sure. Year four, is year that'll be year four? Correct. Yeah, this we, is year three. Of this field? is already. Oh yeah, year yeah, three. yeah. Okay. Yeah, when yeah. Jason said third time, I'm like, it's a fourth time. Okay, then it's well, then it's an easy <clears throat> decision. You trade. Well, you're you resetting the money. Two, right? Because yeah, like, you're, you're going to have to make the Daniel Jones decision on Justin Fields yeah, and that's in a, a year, no. right? Mm -hmm. That that would be the the number one reason to move on. But I do want to see if Fields moves on him go, to go to a team that wants to use his skill set because he can throw the ball downfield decently well. He can run, obviously, as he, good as anybody in the league. Screen passes, oh baby. <laughs> he just he can't. Pocket awareness he, has he, been a problem, and it's there's there is a processing an information processing which people w were talking about at the beginning of when he would be in the pocket and actually have a ton of time looking down the field it's how can you be like f four seconds into this situation and nobody's open I mean maybe like I, I didn't no no, no. I didn't they're, break they're, down the they're open I mean there there's I mean maybe last night they weren't but previous games this season there were lots of open guys down the field that seam route by Herbert a while back that he just didn't even see him. It's hard to play quarterback. I mean, yeah. there's a reason we have like ten guys that can do it. Yeah, so it's it's unfortunate, but I lean that that's what you both, happened. Both lean that way. So for I, dynasty, you're kind of you're kind of uh, feeling very uncomfortable. Yeah, you're feeling uncomfortable with Justin Fields, the security of his future. I do think he will get a job, be traded, have a team that says, "Yeah, we can we can work with Fields next year." Uh, but I don't think it'll be the Bears. Fantasy takeaway last night. My biggest takeaway was Roshan Johnson. Yes. Very, very involved. Ran ahead of Khalil Herbert. Was involved in both the receiving game and the running game. Looked good. I have been a non-believer in Roshan's ability to break into a fantasy-relevant role this season with you know Deontay Foreman and uh, Khalil Herbert ahead of him. But he was basically the start of this game. I think there's no reason for them not to give him a go. And he looks good. Yeah, I mean, he, with a head of steam, Roshan's a pretty powerful back. Yeah. I, I, DJ Moore keeps performing with Justin Fields. <laughs> I mean, that's the other story. 11 for 114 on 13 targets. So um, that was good. Hawkins had gotten to the end zone to save your day. Addison, it was disappointing. 10 targets turning into 6 for 39. Uh, the Josh Dobbs experience was not good there, and the, the play calling for Minnesota was so confusing to me. Of uh, Mad I thought Madison was running pretty well. Like there was at least a couple, uh, just like burst runs where you're like, oh, dude, Madison has some juice giving the ball, and the, but then they would run these like stretches to the outside. That's not Madison's game. And then Ty Chandler, they'd put him up the middle. You're like, no, he's small and fast. Send him to the outside. And then they let Dobbs throw the ball 32 times when it was very, very clear early on that Dobbs should throw maybe 18 times in this game. Yeah, it was it was not a good football game. No. Let's uh, let's move to to brighter things. Oh yeah! Thank you for all who entered the spicy surprise Megalodon giveaway. 
had a fun time doing the Megalodon show this year, and uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed it over the Thanksgiving weekend. Congratulations. We've got three winners. Uh, we've got the DK Metcalf signed jersey that went to at Jason FF. No, no, at Stairway to Evan 17. Congratulations. Javante Williams signed jersey went to at Kevin underscore underscore. Oh, the double, double underscore. Uh, Hanen. And then A.J. Brown signed mini helmet went to at Ski Mask Pickens. Nice. So there you go. We okay. went with the Twitter handles. And um, check your notifications over there, and you can claim your prize. Thank you for everyone contributing. Some spicy surprises over the Thanksgiving weekend, so it was it was a good time. You can follow the show over on X slash Twitter uh, at the FF Ballers and the community. Join the foot.com, which is uh, it's going strong. We also have the largest fantasy football discord, which you can join for free at ballersdiscord.com and join the conversation. Uh, Papa Josh in charge over there. And I will say he puts in above average effort over on That's the discord. Fair. That's very fair. Mm hmm. And um, slightly below great. Yeah, but high best for him. Yeah, right, right, right. What do they we're call so, it? We're grading on a scale? A or grading, I mean, on, grading a curve. on a curve. Yeah. yeah, we're saying he puts in above average effort for him. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, of all the efforts he makes, he loves it's the best of them. Yes. And he's sitting <laughs> in Deucer's Alley today. <laughs> You're gonna see more of Papa Josh in the coming months, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. I, or fortunately, if you're his kid, no, kids no, and family. No. All right, into the news <laughs> we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Two-thirds of Deucer's Alley have betrayed me in a in a trade. Brooks. So Brooks <laughs> we is, need you to step it up. Brooks is the Get that line. betrayal hat on. Darn, the deadline passed. Yeah, oh. the deadline's over. All right, here we go. Um... Rashid Shahid unlikely to play this week. I was asking Mike in the studio yesterday, like there, there's a chance that the Saints have no one. I mean, like Michael Thomas is on IR. Chris Olave has a concussion. Mm -hmm. I don't think he plays. And then, which, I mean, our Scotty Fish team is toast. Oh, I mean, yeah. We're, we we're, made it through to the next level of the playoffs. We've been great all year. We have a lot of bye weeks. <laughs> I mean, no Josh Allen. I mean, this week, the bye week story and the waiver show today, like that is a big part of the fantasy season narrative because the league decided we're going to throw a wrench onto all your rosters and make you scramble with six very, I would say, fantasy-relevant teams on by this week. But Rashid Shahid's hurt. Yeah. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid out. I don't know what the line is on Alvin Kamara receptions. Oh, that could save me this but week. But as soon as it comes out, <laughs> you probably want to go over on that. Yeah, and um, you know the other options they have just to throw it out there: deep leagues, Lynn Bowden Jr., At Perry, and At Perry, and I, and, I lean the Bowden side. And Juwan, and Juwan Johnson, who mm -hmm. who also got banged up, but is okay. He's okay, yeah. And take some Hill. Sure, flexible. They, they need a uh, they need a receiving option. Baker Mayfield's ankle MRI came back negative. Uh, he plays Carolina. I expect him to play. Yeah, should be good. But if you want to follow along at home, if he doesn't. This guy over here is starting Tim Boyle at quarterback in our dynasty league. <laughs> uh, well, because Josh Allen's on a bye and Baker was my backup. Is I, Kyle Trask not available? He probably is. I shouldn't have brought this up. I could have went and looked. <laughs> I don't. That would have been a much better solution. I don't think you need. Let to me worry. take a little. I'm sure Trask is rostered by Jason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's my bet. Is that Kyle Trask? Look, he is rostered. I do love. Not by Jason. Not by Jason. You I'm haven't guessing. traded for him. Brooks. Brooks has like 800 quarterbacks on his roster. It's Troy. Hmm. Okay. All right. Amari Cooper's rib x-rays were negative, so we'll see if he's back out there. Amari Cooper has some uh, small amounts of hope attached to someone else playing quarterback named Joe Flacco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Small amounts. Have we I think that's a pretty heaping amount of hope. Like if, if Flacco plays, yeah. if Flacco plays, I think Amari Cooper Look, has a good game. It's just does Flacco have anything left? He is a statue with both feet inside of cement. Yeah. He didn't like, have anything left when he was playing for the Jets, and he was great with Garrett Wilson. Yeah, yes. He, he, that was fun. He that was Because he threw value. the ball like 40 times Just a game. Saying, like, these these guys, he if, if he was willing to be a backup, 
Maybe, maybe he saw this as the only – he's like, well, I can actually be a starter if I go here. But he didn't have another backup job. Joe, Joe Flacco's he, – he played three games, like the first three games of last year. His pass attempts are comedic. 59. Wow. Yeah. 44, 52. Nice. Um, he managed to – and this may be a record – 3.4 fantasy points on 52 pass attempts. Wow. Yeah. The uh, so You want so, to revise your statement, Jay? Three fumbles, <laughs> two interceptions well, in the same game. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, add 10 yeah. points to his line right there. I, uh, I'll bet Garrett Wilson was fine in that game. I'm uh, curious now. What week was that? That was week three. Okay, but, I'll uh, check. Yeah, he pro I mean, 285 passing yards and negative 10 on turnovers. Kenneth Walker, DMP. Cool. Seattle plays on Thursday again? Yep. Is that just permanent? Is that the Seattle rule? T. Higgins could play this week, Mike. No. Zach Taylor says, I think so. No. The problem is, is you've got Jake Browning at quarterback. He won't. I don't know if you guys uh, – Jeremy, I don't know if – do you remember the stat, but I quoted it on, on Sunday Live from Joe Goodberry, who's a uh, Bengals guy locked in on, on Twitter, good follow, and it was T. Higgins has appeared, I think the number was 68% of the possible snaps that he could have appeared in. 66.8. Any, any change of opinion, uh, we talked about uh, Austin Eckler and the way this season has transpired and what ends up happening in free agency. You know, T. Higgins is much younger. T. Higgins obviously has shown his potential he will, on the football field. Like, he'll get a deal. Is there a better chance he goes back to Cincinnati because of the way this season has gone? I don't think so. The The free agent market for wide receivers is the exact opposite of what it is for running backs. Teams are clamoring to get a wide receiver, and there's not enough out there. So I think he probably gets a big bag from someone, even if he sits out the rest of the season. Also, as an update, week three, Garrett Wilson, last year with Joe Flacco. Yeah. Ten targets. Okay. Six for 60. Yeah. So I would if, take if, that for Cooper. That's what I was going to say. Oh, if yeah. Amari Cooper had oh, yeah. six for 60, we'd be like, okay. The rib injury is concerning, though, because Cooper is hes a downfield guy. He's a jump and make a contested catch guy. I just, I'd be a little nervous if we don't hear. I guess probably pretty good odds it's P.J. Walker this week. So we'll we'll keep an eye on it. We'll, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, one more. Dallas Goddard will push to play this weekend against the 49ers. Don't push too hard on that arm. I won't be pushing to put him into my lineup. This is this is wild. Fractured forearm, never went on IR, possible to play this week. I think you, you have to take a wait-and-see approach. I mean, I if, mean that's got to be a little fracture, right? Like a I, that's little a, fracture. If it's, a, if it's a fracture, it's either healed or it's not, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, healed enough, maybe, with a, and then you can wear a wear a what, brace just, or what, something. a cast? Is it going to be under <laughs> a full cast? That would be awesome. <laughs> Just, just forearm, <laughs> forearming guys. It's like when the guys have the big ball over their hand. I don't know, man. I've never hurt my forearm like that. Not a doctor. No. So we'll we'll ask <laughs> doctor friends. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three. The Bears with Justin Fields and DJ Moore. The Bills with all of their weapons. The Giants, Saquon Barkley. The Raiders, Jacobs and Adams. The Ravens with Zay Flowers and uh, Lamar. Lamar Jackson. And the Vikings. No Justin Jefferson return. Dude. No Addison. No Madison. And uh, and so we get to uh, I, look. We NFL, get to do the dance. I get it. You don't care about our fantasy teams. You should care at least a little bit. We help pay your bills. We you do sh- better than this. Do better. This is ridiculous. You you should care about our fantasy teams. Yeah, yeah. and you should care because we are. Uh, you like those big checks that you get to? Yeah, to those cash? oversized checks we write you. I feel like I've seen a lot of commercials of like. Yes. AWS yes. is running trillions of combinations yeah. to get the schedule perfect. It's like I don't think you want to advertise that. It's been nonstop bad. B- bad scheduling, not like the bye weeks are a mess. Yeah, their the algorithm time games suck. Like, Somebody snuck in a like screen pass only part of the algorithm. They need a couple more tries. Uh, Bezos loaded up with teams with none of these players. So we're look. We want to help you. We want to help you get those. This is this is a spot start situation. We are moving pretty much well past the kind of like stash and hope they develop situation. 
There is spot start waiver pickups, and then there are like, you know, insurance backs that you can add to your roster to protect yourself from injury. But when you look at spot start opportunities, um, the lowest rostered player uh, anywhere near the top of our waiver rankings, which you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We've got our waiver wire rankings every single week. But by far the lowest rostered with the highest opportunity this week seems to be the Jeff Wilson Jr. situation in Miami. He's the number one pickup to me, and he's not a lock to be great because <laughs> yeah, you could still risk. have Devon Achan come back this week. If Devon Achan comes back, Jeff Wilson probably might not even be active he's on for a the bye game. Week. Or, yeah, he's on a bye week. You certainly can't play him even if he's active if Devon Achan is. As of right now, though, Jeff Wilson's my number one waiver pickup of the week. People need running back starts. There are not other good options. I think there are two other options that you could pick up off the waiver wire and start this week. Jeff Wilson against the Washington Manders got enough run last week, looked good, looked healthy. I think that he could have a very, very good fantasy week, and he's available most everywhere. Keaton Mitchell was 9 for 64 on the ground, two targets. Uh, he is on the bye. Right. He can't so, be a I mean, spot start. You know, he would be a player that you stash, like maybe someone drops him because they have to, or maybe he's out there, he's 61% rostered, and then you you were going into next week and you've got Brian Robinson on by or James, James Conner on by. Um, we want to throw that on the radar because maybe you don't need a spot start this week. Yeah. Maybe you're the one lucky human on the earth. If I don't need Jeff, who again comes with a tremendous amount of risk, if I don't need that, I'm gonna I am picking up Keaton Mitchell. Uh, not that I expect humongous things, but he's at least trending up. His uh, since week nine, his his snap count has gone up every single week, up to forty six percent this past weekend in week twelve. So he and He's the type of player that over the, you know, over the fantasy playoffs, he could take over. Like it, it is in the range of outcomes. You can't guarantee it, but it, it's possible. So he, assuming you don't need to pick up Jeff and start him, I'm picking up Keaton Mitchell. The only other two players to me at running back that are pick up and play spot starts would be Ezekiel Elliott. And Samaj P. Ryan. Yep. Both of these guys are backups on their respective team, but they are getting enough work and they have looked good enough recently and their matchups are not the worst. Now, I will say Zeke plays against the Chargers. The Chargers recently, their run defense has looked much improved the last couple of weeks, whereas Samaj is playing against the Houston Texans, who's a very decent matchup. Uh, which one of those two guys, if, if you're out there in a pinch needing a running back and it's just Zeke or it's Samaj, who are Zeke you picking up? for me? It would be Zeke for me as well. I did, like Samaj scored last week, but he was down to, what, 27% of the snaps. And, you know, and he scored. Because Javante was currently missing the game. Well, he, I mean, he came off the field because he had a neck injury yeah, for that snap. And yeah. then he came back in. And so it – Zeke is. I think Chuba, uh, Chuba, if he's somehow out there, would be in in that same category for me. Oh man, that's really tough. That I know he got a rushing touchdown, but I believe that on the course of the year, the Carolina Panthers have three total rushing touchdowns, including the two from last week. I'm um, just more yeah. interested in the receiving work. Yeah, 19 opportunities. Like yeah. he, to me, he cut. He has the odds of catching the same amount of passes as P. Ryan, but get more groundwork. Such a weird thing too with the change at. Yep. Head coach, you just sure. don't know, like, is yep. Chuba going to be more involved, less involved? That's why he's worth the dart throw to me, just because I, it's tough, man. You start Samaj P. Ryan, you're, I think your floor is lower with P. Ryan than it is with Hubbard. I agree. But obviously the the, the Broncos, they're 6-5 and five now. Yeah, they, they're they hot. They I mean, And they're playing well. Aren't they, they, I think they've their won the most is, games is playing well. in a row of anybody in the NFL right now. Well, they started one and five, so they've won their last five games. Yeah, yeah, and um, probably Sean Payton is really exhaling <laughs> with how this season yeah. has turned around, including Buffalo and Kansas City. I mean, crazy. So they, this, this was they're a team second I, in the division then, right? Because the the Chargers are below know. them, and then the Raiders are below them, I right? I mean, that has to be the case. So they're I would think they're currently so. second in the division with a that with a correct. better with a better record than the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are in the 10th seed in the AFC right now. 
Crazy. What a world. So, Us. would you drop Damian Pierce um, for any of those guys? Like, no. I'm not, no. I don't think so. I, I mean, think I think so. he fits in the I, same category of spot start as those guys. I agree completely. Maybe. I'd drop Herbert, Khalil Herbert. Yeah, I'm okay doing that. I, I might drop Pierce for Keaton Mitchell, assuming I don't need Damian I could Pierce see that. this week. No, I could see That's that. That's fair. If that you're, makes if, sense. If you're not looking for a spot start. Because the yes. – like the – Eighty two percent of snaps for single yeah, carry last week. Say there's still a lot to watch because Pierce was just coming back from his ankle ankle injury. Was that what it was? Uh, yeah, what, it was. It was. But before he got hurt, single Terry was already kind of starting to take the over the time share. So again, that's a that's a number that you have to pay attention to and watch. But it was still very positive for single Terry, even though the 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 output wasn't what you were hoping for. He was still getting the work. Um, before we move on to wide receivers, I do have a uh, I have a surprise question for you, and I it's, it's putting you on the spot. I don't know if you'll have a name that just jumps out immediately, but I'll give you some time to think about it while I answer it myself. I've seen the question to say, you know, who's your best pick that you made this past year? And, you know, some players you believed in, and you took higher in the draft, and they worked out. But then I've seen who's your who was the worst pick you made. And for me, oh, like in our actual drafts, in, well, in our drafts or like yeah, okay. any draft that you've done, like who is gotcha. the worst pick? And to me, my answer was Damian Pierce. Like I bought into the the way the preseason looked, and you combine that with inefficiency at the top of the year with the O line, and then the injury. Like Damian Pierce is by far the worst pick that I've made. The one that has hurt me the most because I picked him everywhere was Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup was like if he if he was a player where I was at times in the offseason willing to take him with the number one spot. I, I usually wouldn't, but it could be the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh pick. Sometimes he'd fall, and he's never getting past me around pick five in the offseason. I, I had him in so many best ball drafts, and obviously a lot of it's been injury, but he's also a, had disappointing games a good answer. out there. He's crushed me. Do you have a worse pick candidate, uh, Mike? Maybe it, it maybe Waller, just because of the way that like it was great. basically a lost season. Uh, yeah, it was like it was pretty good. Then it was terrible, but you kept playing him, and then it was trending up, and then he got hurt. So yeah. it was yeah, it's really it's, it's a lost season for Waller. All right, quick break. Back with the wideouts. I'm not sure you needed us to say it, but there are some like insurance backs. Elijah Mitchell, uh, Dearness Johnson seems to be getting a lot yep. of opportunity behind yes. ETN. Uh, Rico Dowdle for Tony Pollard, and then uh, Zach Moss back into the workflow. Uh, you know, I, I so I I think before we move on to to wide receivers, oh, uh, because we have some breaking news here. Okay, uh, Colts running back Jonathan Taylor, fresh off. Uh, this is from Rappaport. He suffered an injured thumb that is requiring further al evaluation and puts his status. Is that in, why we didn't see a lot of him? Puts wow. his status in doubt. Going forward. forward. New, oh no! New number one waiver wire pickup. Yeah, Zach. Of hold the on, week. Cut. Deucer's Alley Cam, please. Zach. <laughs> Deucer's Alley camera. Let, who, who's got his head in his hands? Is it one of the betrayers? Papa Josh. Is it one of the betrayers? Yes. All right, Splice is the betrayer. Front. Number one pickup of the week, Zach Moss. Yeah, I mean, it really is. He's, oh, he's that is on uh, half the league. Shout out to uh, Matthew Betts for, for tossing that breaking news wow. into the equation. This was, um, wow. So it's funny. Before, and that matchup is Tennessee this week. Yeah, it's not not great for running backs, but they've they've uh, they've been a little bit looser um, on the ground. I was just about to bring up uh, conceptually, kind of like what Mike was talking about. If you had someone like Damian Pierce on your roster, and he is a bench player, would you drop Damian Pierce for someone like Elijah Mitchell? Or I was going to bring up Zach Moss, like the, these guys where. Because I think if Damian, I think if Devin Singletary went down, I'm not convinced that Damian think, Pierce would be better than if Christian McCaffrey went down and Elijah Mitchell got the yeah, start. I think it's a fair question. Yeah, that that's that's definitely fair. Um, yeah, Mitchell would be better. It feels than weird Pierce at this be. point to drop a player who's getting work like Damian Pierce for someone that's a, just a backup, but it might be the right 
strategy at this point in the season. There, it would be the right strategy. The only situation where it's not is that like Pierce is an emergency player you can put into your lineup. Mitchell isn't. Uh, maybe maybe Mitchell. I think maybe Mitchell there. would still be that. But I would be looking at my roster and saying, do I do I have two running backs and then Pierce? Right, right, right. Or do I have like three or four running backs and then Pierce? And then it's a completely different equation. Correct. If I have at least one other running back pivot option, I think that's the right move. I think that's the smartest move. That's the league winning move because Mitchell would win you the league. Yeah, but but I agree with you. Don't assume you have depth just because he's the first guy on your bench. So we left the running backs. Well, and the last because I just remembered it, but there was um, uh, was it? I think it was Vrabel. Someone from the Titans was saying we're still trying to figure out how to get Tajay Spears more involved. Who knows if that materializes? But they're at least talking about. Oh, it. that that's um. That's a really weird statement after giving a guy two carries. I agree. So like maybe, to me, it's the like he's off my list con- of pickups. Maybe that was the context of like Spears. Why did Spears plummet in work when he'd been doing well? So it the matchup been this week is so good for Derrick Henry. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's the best running back matchup you can find, pretty much. Right. Uh, it, uh, on the course of the season, they're twenty sixth. Yeah, but look over the last like handful of weeks. I thought they were much worse than that. but um, They're definitely a team to target, them being the Indianapolis Colts. So, yeah, so the breaking news ends up kind of usurping the running back segment entirely where, you know, Wilson, Mitchell, Zeke is a spot start, but, like, Zach Moss is the number one pickup. And and follow this news through the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I'll say that because if, if we find out that it's yeah, something he's, he's going to manage, uh, then, then Moss is not worth a huge fab drop, but – this is why you save some of your fat moments like this, because Zach Moss will dominate if he gets all the work. We've I mean, we've seen it already. Yeah, it's it's tried, true, delivered. What wide receiver pickups until the PED pop? <laughs> <laughs> until Zach Moss PED. Oh, you gotta have an explanation. Oh, for I gotta this. I gotta have one last jab. <laughs> There's gotta be some reason he's doing this, huh? In year what is it? Year four. Well, it's just system. He needs to get in the right yeah, system. I guess so. He's played so good. He's, he's played I mean, so yeah. good. He's he's certainly made me eat crow. Uh, it's com. It it's just, comedic, it's man. It's crazy because he sucked for three years and then was the best running back. Ever. All right, uh, wide receiver waiver wire pickups. I'm gonna I'm gonna let let you guys segment this. Fifty uh, percent rostered or higher group, and then fifty percent rostered or lower group. So. In the higher group, you know, you had the the breakout performance from Rashi Rice, first double digit target game of his entire career. You know, Kadarius Tony, gone. I mean, Nicole Hardman, IR. It was huge for Rashi Rice, and they got him involved. Eight for one oh seven and a touchdown. What is your confidence level right now? Because obviously Tony could return. Uh the ball gets distributed everywhere. Predictability has been a problem in that offense. Like the nice thing does this performance is, change your perspective at all? It, it does a little bit because of the combination of Henry uh, uh, Kadarius Tony um, and McCall Hardman being out, and then you saw MVS kind of used in a different way, where he wasn't just the every down type of player. What was his snap counts? Fifty three percent. Oh, beautiful! And so MVS was down at fifty three. You're I figure, so. I'll you're check figuring that. it out, Kansas City. Was he was he tired? Fifty three percent. Yeah. Marquez Valdez sit him. Did you guys uh, nice. catch the the the? I think it was the all twenty two. You can see it, but the the Rice touchdown. I have not seen the all uh, twenty two of it. M- M- MVS is like fifteen yards further down the field and wide open. <laughs> and I maybe Mahomes saw him, maybe he didn't, but it was like I know which player can catch this <laughs> ball. So Rashi Rice is heavily rostered. Um, has Green Bay, Buffalo, New England. Christian Watson had a good performance, five for ninety-four and a touchdown. It was against Detroit, which is a, you can target Detroit's passing yeah, game uh, this week. A lot tougher. I mean, Christian Watson should be getting a lot of sneed this week, which yeah is concerning. It leads me to almost prefer Jaden Reed, uh, who is more widely available. He has also been very, very good. Jaden Reed has been. You know, Andy, you've said for about a month that you thought Jaden Reed was the best wide receiver in that room, and I think they've got a really young, talented wide receiver room with Christian Watson and Dobbs and and Reed and and others. I mean, Wicks, yeah, Wicks and Musgrave if he was healthy. Um, but you've got a stretch run here for 
Jaden Reed since the bye week in week six, where he's pretty much been a relevant fantasy player all but one week. Um, I, I think if they were both there, I mean, it depends on what you're going for, right? Like the ceiling is higher on a Christian Watson ceiling game, but I feel like the consistency is much more on Jaden Reed's side. I, I might, if both of those guys were out there, I'd prioritize Reed. Because of the Sneed matchup for Watson or in the, general? The, the Sneed matchup for Watson this week and in general, I think he's just the more consistent player. It's too bad we don't get a Sneed on Reed situation. It is. Right? We could have a whole Dr. Seuss book about it. <laughs> right. Brandon Cooks, I love targeting Brandon Cooks right now, the way this offense is cruising. Uh, four for 72 and one. Like there are, I mean, of all the players that can put up 150 plus, you know, Brandon Cooks is in that category and, um, 64% rostered, so that, that those are kind of four names out of the 50% and above. Beckham is also in that group of like, yeah. you know, if the other guys are gone and Beckham's there, then you could look his way, but. It's gone back and forth for Brandon Cooks. He's had like a dud game, then a big game, then a dud game, then a big game. But he, you know, since week six, he's had four big, big games, you know, double-digit fantasy points and half-point scoring, one of them. 27.8 points big blow up performance we've talked about Dak's schedule the rest of the way well that obviously goes to the wide receivers as well so Brandon Cooks to me if he's out there might be the best pickup of everyone mentioned yeah that's uh I think that's how I ranked it or very close to that I want to bring Curtis Samuel's name up under 50 percent rostered he was hurt he got dropped by a lot of people he does have a bye week coming up the week after uh, this week but 12 targets Every time I was watching this game, I felt like he was catching a pass. I mean, it was like yeah. it was nonstop. He was nine for a hundred. If you're in a PPR league, full, especially full PPR certainly helps. But man alive, I just feel like we're at the point where I need to know what I'm putting in my roster to the best of my knowledge. And if you tell me that Curtis Samuel gets ten targets and Jahan Dotson gets one next week. Or you tell me Curtis Samuel gets one and Jahan Dotson gets ten, or it's a, a Logan Thomas game, or or uh, Gibson and Robinson end up with twelve combined targets. Like every week, you know Sam Howell's throwing it a ton, and against Miami, he's going to throw it even more. He's he's going to drop back forty five times. So Curtis Samuel is a fine play, but you just can't. He's not really been the one omitted. Oh, I, I'm going to convince you. I'm going to convince you right now. Okay, I, I know how to do it. All right. Uh, because I'm gonna I'm gonna read names that are in the under 50 percent category that you could choose to to spot start instead of Curtis Samuel, and you're gonna say no to all of them. Okay, okay? Curtis Samuel against Miami or Demario Douglas with no. the concussion. Curtis Samuel. Okay, Jalen Hyatt. He can't even on oh, he's on by. Yeah. Uh, see, he told you. Uh, Justin Watson. Who had three targets and was one for three in a touchdown. He did run a lot of routes against Green Bay. I'm gonna go, go ahead and say that. Go ahead, do it. Curtis Samuel. Uh, A.T. Perry, Greg Dorch, Noah Brown, who's inactive. Don't know if he's coming back. Guyton. Uh, Give me another. I mean, Lynn Bowden uh, stepping in. I would say Greg Dorch might be worth considering. The last two weeks, eight targets, nine targets, both with Kyler. You need Michael Wilson out, though. Right, but Michael Wilson, he didn't even practice once last week after the re-aggravation. So, I, I mean... It's too early to know for sure, but I presume he is going to continue to be out. Curtis Samuel, in uh, in in games where he's had good snap counts, has been has been all right. I I mean I wouldn't go Dorch, but maybe you could Dorch it. Yeah, I don't feel good about any of them. Hope Brandon Cooks out there. <laughs> You're leaving. Yeah, I mean it's really it feels top heavy at the wide receiver position. Um, what did you make of the Deontay Johnson play? Because, I mean, he's in the drop candidates. But the, by the way, Brooks. The fumble play? Yeah, Brooks finds. When I mention drop candidates, these are names straight from Twitter. These are names yeah. people are actually thinking about dropping. So don't. Hopefully, you don't find it too outlandish because these are, these are real names people are considering. Um, Deontay Johnson's on that list. And yeah, I'm talking about the fumble play where he, he basically, like, obviously the play didn't involve him. It was going to be a running play. He didn't engage the defender. Then a fumble happens. He didn't even care. Seemed like he got he in a fight with Minka Fitzpatrick in the locker room. Yeah. The, the I would have to watch it again, but but my memory is he like I I think he was so disengaged from the play he didn't even notice. That, yeah, no, he didn't. Like, he was. Okay. That's the indictment, though. Yeah, the yeah, indictment yeah. is it was a run play, so he just stood there. Like the ball was snapped and he didn't move. It was like I've never. I mean, you just don't see NFL players do that. 
Yeah, it's it's a really is bad. Is he look. on? He got paid. He got like a a mini, little baby a, deal, a mini extension. Yeah. Okay. But okay. but four for fifty. I mean that's it, that's not full sabotage of of a flex spot, and the way that the, their offense was just so much better, and, and, and know, they're playing Arizona. If, I would I would not drop Deontay. Yeah, if you said, do I have to start Curtis Samuel or Deontay Johnson? I would start Deontay Johnson for sure. The wide receiver thirty nine on the season. Last four weeks, 75, oh, 37, 41, 57. Um, I needed to move on. Chris Godwin. I needed to move on so long ago. I kept looking at the targets, seven targets, 12 targets, seven targets. Last two weeks, seven targets, seven targets. That should be good. He's on pace for 80. Receptions, 936 yards and 1.5 touchdowns. He was, he was one foot from a touchdown. Last week, six fantasy points. The week before, 6.9 fantasy points. Not very nice. The week before, 7.4 fantasy points. The week before, 2.6 fantasy points. I mean, Chris Godwin has been a targeted, irrelevant player. It's I, crazy. I mean, he played – so in his last – how many games this these were good year? matchups for him. In his last 14 games, one touchdown. Yeah, I, yeah. So uh, I think I want to look it's elsewhere. I T, mean, all, T. Higgins, all, are you dropping Higgins? You're not getting Burrow back. Yeah, you're dealing with injury. I think you. I think you can. Yeah, I would drop T. Higgins. How I will think, that feel, Mike? Uh, a great sense of relief. Hmm. The, I uh, he's still on my roster, technically speaking, in the league of record. And me and Kyle were running through some scenarios where, we're like, well, if we do this, you realize we have to keep T. Higgins. <laughs> And Kyle's, oh, in different scenarios yeah, of who you would be keeping? Yeah, and Kyle's just like, no, no. And I'm like, well, hold, well, hold on, he's a free agent. What if, what if, because this is in the world of free agents, you get to play the game, what if? What if T. Higgins goes to the Kansas City Chiefs? That's Absolutely. I've seen that name brought up a lot. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it legitimately could happen. It should happen it's, if you're the Chiefs. Yes. Um, and then what do you do if you've been experienced – Two full years of T. Higgins' pain. I was going to say you your story with T. Higgins, <laughs> the diary entries you must have, dude. I because I still believe he's a great player. He just is hurt all the time. Yeah, and eventually the clock runs out on those guys. Yes, but I I mean he's young enough to where I don't know. You're going into next season like we did the dance with McCaffrey's injury history, right? Uh -huh. And then we did the dance. Uh -huh. We're going to do the dance with Christian uh, Cooper Cup next mm -hmm. year. Because of the injury history and the situation at quarterback. And T. Higgins is going to be in that discussion of, like, you bet and you either win or you really lose. I mean, it, it feels so much worse. I mean, one, he's been on my main roster for the for the past two and whatever years. And I have, I have caped for him so many times on this podcast. And he just makes me look the fool every time. <laughs> you got to stop doing this to me. See? Come on, I'm yeah. on your side. Yeah, we, we were we were working on building Mike's ultimate uh, roster this past weekend yeah. of like players that he's been fans of, like AJ Dillon starting a running back for him. Sure, for sure, um, for sure. Clyde Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah. Who, oh yeah. He actually started at running back this and, past and week. almost had a touchdown. Yeah. I thought he, had, he did have a touchdown. He had two attempts. <laughs> <laughs> I when when I saw the play and I saw. <laughs> what, what I believe, I saw. I saw a touchdown. Clyde too. Edwards Alaire yeah. get into the end yeah. zone. I went, "Are you kidding me?" Mike, <laughs> Mike started. Was, him Mike and was he got screaming. A he was screaming, "Crazy like a fox! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy like a fox!" But instead, it was a terrible. What, what is going on with coaches refusing to review touchdowns this year? It is frustrating. I feel like I've seen at least five where it's like that's a clear touchdown. Yes. Now the the Chiefs they got theirs. Pacheco. Got right in. They took it away from Clyde. They gave Clyde another chance. He didn't do it. Another chance. He didn't well, do it. Then Pacheco got right like, in. We've seen plays where they get in. You're like, yeah, but they run up. Like, we'll oh, catch them off guard. Maybe we got it. And you clearly got in. If you would just take a moment and look at the review, you got in. And then they kick a field goal. Or like, worse. They or turn worse, the ball they, over. You get two challenges per game, right? Yeah. Or possibly three. And if you lost a timeout, you would have lost it in the first half. Right, a lot of these games. It's so um, bizarre. It feels egregious this year. One more drop candidate that's come up. Well, actually, two more. But one more that I want to discuss the kind of this season about. People are, we're talking about the JSN catch. It was an amazing catch. Sure. Obviously, there's 
challenges for JSN this year with Lockett and, and Metcalf Gino. and Geno. People were asking on on Twitter, you know, is JSN about to be a league winner? No, I was like, no, not no. this year. But are you willing to drop him? I mean, I'm willing if the there's certain players. Weeks, yeah, if if you need a start right now, he's going up against Dallas this week, which is as bad as it gets. Um, and then San Francisco the next week. Both of those are on the road. He literally just is coming off of a game against San Francisco where they were at home and they put up 13 total points. He scored five fantasy points. So you're not starting him for the next two weeks. If he's a league winner, you're talking about only in fantasy playoffs when you're going to start him without ever having him had like a breakout game. Uh, Cooper Cup. You don't drop I'm Cooper. Not, no, that, no, that's, that's silly. No, happening. do you play him is the question. Probably. Which we will get to later. This yeah, week. we'll get to it later. We why decide now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's push that crazy. pain. Push that pain to the sides, Cleveland. <laughs> uh, is Denzel Ward going to be back? I don't know. I think so. The, the way that it, it seemed, the way that they were talking about him, he would be. All right, tight end waiver wire pickups. Pat Fryermuth takes the cake this week. Seeing the integration into the, you know, offense the. Throws to the middle of the field. Pat Frymuth of the Steelers, 9 for 120 last week. 48% roster. You got to go get him. You got to go get him. He was out in the middle of the field. He was actually, the, the, the utilization and how they used him lined up in the slot was very, very different than pre, with, during the Matt Canada era. So this is a, a, a schematic change that is, Really great for Pat Fryermuth. He plays Arizona this week. Arizona started the year pretty solid against tight ends. They they've kind of given it up a little bit. I mean, Tyler Higby just got two touchdowns sure. against them this last week. So he's the clear number one tight end pickup. He might be the number one pickup of across all positions. If he's out there, which he's out there in more than half of leagues, uh, according to Yahoo data, this is a, a, a must pickup. And I am especially like if. Maybe you have to burn a priority or whatever to get a spot start. I'm picking up the Muth. I don't. I don't know that the Muth is going to, you know, continue to be great. But he is. He. We know he's a good player, and if the scheme is built for him, he will succeed. But I'm picking up the Muth to block. Like I. I don't want anyone else in my league who needs a tight who end. needs a tight end to get the Muth. So I will put him on the back of my bench and say you don't get to play him. Yeah, I was really sad to see my opponent this week had the mute on his yeah. bench i was like oh dang it well the reason why you pick up the block is because there aren't guarantees elsewhere they're, they're correct everyone else you pick up you're 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 playing roulette and you know people are going to chase tyler higby's two touchdowns that's dumb yeah that's dumb because now you're chasing now you're saying tyler higby have two consecutive good games the yeah. odds of that Probably not. I'm not very good. Certainly then, not against Cleveland. You know, Gerald Everett. I mean, he splits time and he got into the end zone, but that was a grotesque game yeah, to watch. I, I mean, Kate Otten, at least he plays 100 percent of snaps. That's my yep. Kate Otten argument. We we brought his name up earlier. Mike did, but Jawan Johnson would be the the second best tight end pickup to yeah. me. Uh, so long as you're looking for a start, because Isaiah Likely might still be better, but Isaiah Likely's on by. Uh, Jawan Johnson, we we brought up. There's there's no one to throw the ball to. He saw twenty percent of the targets. Se yeah, seven targets this last week. I know he was banged up a little bit, but I believe he's good to go health wise. And if he's good to go, and no other wide receivers are, he will get utilized a lot. Yeah, I mean, it, any kind of PPR leagues, he should have five receptions. And if you're telling me I can bank on my tight end having five receptions, that's good enough for me off the waiver wire. Okay. Anybody else we want to talk about at tight end? Uh, I mean, the the last, like the deepest of the deepest of deep leagues is Tucker Craft. <laughs> deepest of the deepest just, of the deep. I just want to make sure, like I'm not. Jules Verne wrote about him. <laughs> yes, he did. There's monsters and giant squids. But Tucker Craft, he caught a touchdown for the for the Packers. And the latest we have heard on, uh, Musgrave, on might Musgrave is that he's probably done for the season. Defensive questions, uh, there, there are a bunch of names. You know, you're know, you trying to plan ahead a little bit. If your roster can support it, it's hard to do that. In a, in a week when you have six buys, it's hard to hold multiple defenses mm -hmm. when you would like to, including like the Baltimore defense is a great defense, but they are – I'll probably still hold them. Yeah, I'll hold the Ravens. They are on by. Yep. Um, 
you don't, I would not touch them for two thirds of the fantasy playoffs. Two thirds? Yes. I, I, I would not play them against San Francisco, and I would not play them against Miami. Okay, man. because uh, Miami is too explosive, too much danger. Like I feel like I can find a mediocre defense playing a garbage Carolina, garbage Jets, garbage Giants. I think you'll have time before you get there, but like, yeah, I, I don't. As of right now, I wouldn't be scared to play the Ravens against Tua. Um, oh, yeah, I, I I wouldn't That's either. Interesting. But I, I That's do. a different take than what I would have expected. Yeah, I mean, Tua the the Dolphins have given up um, more fantasy points to opposing defenses than the, than their average. So like it, they're they're not even though they're an explosive offense, they've uh they've turned the ball over enough or taken enough sacks where for fantasy it's been is okay. Is that game in Miami or is it in Baltimore? I believe that's in Baltimore. That makes in a Baltimore. huge yeah, difference in Baltimore. Uh the Bills defense, which is one that's going on by, punt them yeah, off a I bridge cuz they're on by. Then they come back against Kansas City, you're not going to play them. Then they play against Dallas, no thank you. Then they play against the Chargers, probably not. And the Bills' defense hasn't, you know, it's been wrecked with injuries, so they they shouldn't be rostered anymore. Yeah, it's uh, Baltimore's defense is the number two defense in the league. Right yeah, now. They, they've been great. So, um, all right, uh, options for this week. Who are your top options? Uh, the, options. The the top options are usually, you know, you you want to play them, <laughs> you want to play the matchups. So. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars mm -hmm. are going up against Browning at home, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Jaguars have been a good defense. So, like, the Falcons and the Buccaneers are also good pickups. Can they cover uh, the tip pass? <laughs> if they, as long as they can shut that down, then they're going to be great. Yeah, so, I, you know, the way that I, I sort mine, I've got Jacksonville number one against Cincinnati at home, um, and then number two, I've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I think they are a – decent defense they're playing against Bryce Young and a coachless team uh in Carolina at home and then the Falcons play <laughs> the Jets and they you just boil you want to play against Boyle and the Falcons are widely available they're available in 90 percent of leagues so there should be some bidding on them if those other guys aren't available uh Mike any other thoughts uh we'll just add in that the Jaguars they play it's on the road the following week but they get Cleveland so it's either one of those three quarterbacks that we've talked about for the Browns, and that's and and none of them should be scary. Um, one other defense I'll throw out there: the Chargers have been much better on defense recently. I think they've cured some of their ails, and they're playing against New England. And they so far, New England has loved throwing the ball to the other team. Did we? Yeah, not, did we mention do. the the Rams yet? No. Okay, so Rams Rams play Cleveland this week. I again, I'd, even if it's Flacco's first start, I would be happy to play the Rams against them. Baltimore, you're going to want to dodge that, but then you get Washington at home. That's you, the first week of the playoffs. Of the playoffs, the second week you get the Saints at home, and then you get Tommy DeVito on the road. So the Rams, aside from Week 14, have a pretty solid run coming up. That Saints defense playing the Panthers, playing the Giants. Being under 50% rostered is delightful as well for upcoming matchups. Yeah, a lot of good options. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Face off against the ultimate threat in single player. Settle old scores on 16 iconic maps in multiplayer and survive the hordes in a co-op open world zombie experience. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, available now, rated M for Mature. Full stream ahead. Well, you guys have uh, two streaming quarterback options I like a lot more than my risky option, so I'm going to let you go first. Uh, well, then Mike should go first because right, this I'm, is who I wanted to put in, but you got to the dock first. I will jump in. The, the Broncos' defense has been playing much better. The offense has been good enough to win the games. But now eh, we get to play Houston, and it's Russell Wilson, Texans. They rank as the 29th in schedule adjusted points to the quarterback. Uh, Houston allows the third highest completion rate in the NFL. And we're looking at a 46.5 point over under that's tied for the second highest of the week right now. I think that, that if you're in a pinch, which there's a lot of people in a pinch this week, Russ is, a, is should be a solid play. I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield. 
Uh, Baker Mayfield this week plays at home against the Carolina Panthers. Maybe they'll be all juiced up from their coach being fired, but this is actually not one of those situations where, like with the Raiders, I don't think anyone on the team liked right. their coach and they were like celebrating that he was gone. This was like everyone loved Frank Reich. They're sad that he's gone. This doesn't seem like a motivational push forward. This seems like a dysfunctional team uh, that is, you know, going to give the number one pick to the Chicago Bears. But Baker's been pretty good, man. He's got four of his last six starts are actually top 12 quarterback finishes. And I don't know if you remember. Oh, I do. Yeah, you do. Because <laughs> champ, champ, champ. <laughs> Mike Evans went off last time he played Carolina. For three touchdowns in week 17 last year, won people championships, and uh, Mike Evans is Baker's number one guy. He's his favorite guy. Mike Evans has been so good. He is... Uh, also, Mike Evans started the week. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> no. Okay. No, Mike Evans is, has been a lock all season long, and it's crazy because um, if you, I saw this, uh, and I wish I could give credit because I don't remember what... I saw it on a reel or something. But like if you look at the numbers between Mike Evans and Devontae Adams over the last handful of years, they're basically identical. And everybody looks at Devontae Adams as this, you know, as the one of the top five, top three talents at the wide receiver position. And here Mike Evans is putting up the same numbers. Darn right he is. Every single year. And like cumulatively cumulatively. Cumulatively. He's doing cumulatively. He's been doing the same stuff. Uh, by the way, I formally withdraw my full stream ahead candidate. I'm leaving oh, it. No. We're leaving it at two. Look, okay. my na the name was Gardner Minshew because of the matchup. Gardner Minshew is not going to be good enough. He's not. He's not going to be good enough. He hasn't had a two touchdown game in the last uh, in, in the last three starts. Look, the matchup's nice against Tennessee, but he is as risky as it, super deep leagues. If Baker and Russ are not there, you can put Gardner in. You would can you pray. Go, would you go Gardner, or would you go the resurging Kenny Pickett against the Arizona Cardinals? Pickett. Yeah, that's why I'm withdrawing. I'll switch okay. it. I'll switch it right. to pick it. All right. Pick it switch. Live on the show. That is it. That is it for the streaming quarterback candidates. We got hungry for more Thursday night preview and mailbag tomorrow. Starts of the week, matchup previews coming on Thursday, and more matchups in the fantasy faceoff. And Mike spinning that delightful oh, yeah. wheel again yeah. on Friday. Shout out to the Deucers over there in Deucers Alley. Thank you very much for taking care of business today. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, Papa Josh, and his Jonathan Taylor shares. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.